While 2020, an unprecedented year, once in a century pandemic that ravaged the world and disrupted the economy like never before. Stock markets, though, have seen some wild swings from the start of the year to where we finally closed. But after the first three months, the market started to stabilize and with central banks around the world opening their purse strings, liquidity was in abundance. It's almost bizarre that the Sensex and the Nifty are ending the year with healthy double-digit returns considering the ferocious 30% fall from January to March. Manglam is here with a review of the year that was on the Lal Street. Manglam. Well, 2020 was an unprecedented year for the world and the economies at large, but it was remarkable for the markets. And when we look back at 2020, it's important to see the entire story. For the record, 2020, the Nifty saw a 15% gain. Would you believe it? 2020 actually was better for the markets than 2019. In fact, the second best that we've seen in all of last five years. On a point-to-point -point basis, if you take a look at all the indices, the Nifty as well as the Sensex up 15%. The Nifty Bank was a mild underperformer. The Nifty mid caps and the small caps put in 22% in terms of gains. But that doesn't tell you the full story. The full story lies in what happened during the year. During the year, you know, from Jan to March, there was a big dip globally owing to coronavirus, lockdowns, and a lot of uncertainty. So from Jan to March, Nifty saw a 29% dip. A 40% dip is what we saw in the Nifty Bank. Mid caps and small caps falling around 32 to 40 odd percent as well. But then the world started coming to terms with the virus and the central banks all over started printing truckloads of money and that led to a mother of all bull runs across the global markets. India was a beneficiary. From March to December, Nifty and the Nifty Bank actually saw a near 63% gain. That's not all. The mid cap index and the small cap indices grew 80 and 100% respectively. So that's about the indices. Again, to tell you more, let's talk about the individual sectors. This year was definitely the year of the pharmaceutical as well as the IT pack, apart from mid and small caps. So the IT index up 55%, pharmaceuticals outperformed with a 60% gain. Metals also played a little bit of a solo sometime in the second half of this year. The FMCG index steady as she goes, 14%, but it was the PSU bank index which was down by 31% in 2020. Among the pharmaceutical stocks, the latest entrant on the Nifty, Divi's Lab, up 107%. Would have doubled your money. Dr. Reddy's Sipla and Sun Pharma gaining anywhere between 35 to 80%. Similar were the gains that we saw for all the IT stocks as well. TCS was the underperformer there. That too gained around 33%, with Infosys adding 70% to its market cap, 60 and 65% for Wipro and HCL Tech. Some notable Nifty gainers. The rally on the Nifty from 7,500 to 11,000. The biggest contributor was Reliance. That ended this year with a 35% gain. I spoke about the metal stocks. m and did well as well. And Asian Paints continued to notch record highs right through the year and ended at a record high as well with a 54% gain. The underperformers, a lot of them belong to the financial space or the PSU basket, the likes of Coal India, IOC, SBI down 18%. Indusind Bank was the key underperformer with a 40% cut in 2020. But the big moves came in in the mid-cap space. Granules nearly tripling your money. Adani Enterprises, even the mid-cap IT pack, uh, Mindtree, Tata Alexi, all of them up 105, 123%. Aurobindo Pharma doubled your money this year. Escorts, almost 99%, a century out there. We ordered a lot from Zomato this year, didn't we? So InfoEdge was up 90% as well. And if we call for a lot of pizza, Jubilant Foodworks up almost 70% in 2020. That's not all. We had some losers as well. And among the mid-cap losers, all of them belong to the financial pack and nearly all of them belong to the PSU pack. So we had PNB, Union Bank, Canada Bank, Bank of Baroda, RBL Bank. All of these stocks would have halved your capital or maybe lost almost a third of your capital in 2020. The biggest moves, however, were reserved for the small caps who turned into mid and mega caps in 2020. Tanla Platforms, a near 10 bagger this year. Adani Green, a relatively little known company in the start of 2020, up nearly six times. Loris Lab, RT Drugs would have made your money four times in this year. CG Power, Birla Soft, India Mart as well. A lot of business was done online. And Dixon Tech, everyone talks about the PLI schemes make in India, that stock higher by 260% as well. So the story of 2020, mid caps, small caps, IT and pharma did rather well. Over to 2021 now. 
All right, Mangla, many thanks for joining us with a wrap of the equity market action in 2020. Now, unlike the equity markets, it has been a turbulent year for the mutual fund industry. So, Myra Abidi is here with a wrap of what has been a year to forget for MF investors. Take a look. 2020 proved to be quite a dampener for mutual fund investors. But it did begin on a high note with investors pouring in their savings. But as you can see, the end of the year has only seen consistent outflows. Remember this June, I'll come back to it. Three big issues caused a lot of heartburn this year. The most outrage was reserved for the winding up of six managed credit schemes by Franklin Templeton India, which were managing assets in excess of 25,000 crores. The Yes Bank 81 issue, where the Reserve Bank moved to write down the value to zero, also hurt investor sentiment and quite a bit. The outrage continued when the same was repeated with Lakshmi Vilas Bank. The Franklin episode, in fact, saw 22,000 crore rupees of redemptions from debt funds in a matter of three days when the entire category at that time was roughly about one lakh crore, right? So almost a quarter. Things did stabilize for the debt fund industry by June. But that's when the equity side started misbehaving. You remember that figure? Flows dropped by 96% from the previous month. And this continued selling is what we saw through the remainder of 2020. Another contentious episode this year was the announcement of the strict investment norms for multi-cap funds in September end. Something which was swiftly corrected in early November by the introduction of the flexi-cap category. The market regulator SEBI also introduced the new Riskometer, a comprehensive new formula which will allow investors to track the level of risk taken at a scheme level and it's effective from the 1st of Jan. It was also mandated that liquid funds invest a minimum of 10% in liquid assets and stress tests were made mandatory. As well as a fallout of the Yes Bank 81 bond episode, SEBI said only institutional buyers could buy 81 bonds and that to in lots of 1 crore. While the industry assets dipped to a little over 22 lakh crores when the market hit its lows in March, the AUM did recover to about 30 lakh crores by November, led by the swelling of NAVs and of course the market at all-time highs. SBI became the first AMC to cross 4 lakh crores in assets, making it the largest by far. But the bummer was the negative returns by liquid funds again during the horror show that was March. And there was a record number of NFOs this year, 115. So the main talk during 2020 basically revolved around Franklin Templeton, defaults, active versus passive, and we all came to know what ESG stands for. NFOs were being sold in every nook and cranny. Remember, there were 115 after all. And of course, international exposure, which, by the way, did very well as a theme. So what do we look forward to in 2021? Well, almost immediately, we look forward to the result of the winding up vote of Franklin Templeton and the next vote to decide on the liquidation process is expected in Jan 2. All right, Tamara, so many thanks. Well, 2020, a year that the mutual fund industry would perhaps best like to forget. Now, this was also the year that the big got bigger. Large conglomerates created wealth for shareholders as their market capitalization simply kept soaring. Nimesh is here with a roundup of how the big guns of India Inc. fared in 2020. Nimesh. We all know that 2020 has been a challenging year for the world at large. However, there are a few large business groups that saw opportunity in adversity and created wealth for shareholders. Let's look at the list. The first is the Bajaj Group. The Bajaj Group added close to 10% in market cap in 2020, and the overall group market cap is now inching close to the 6 lakh crores in 2020. Look at the Aditya Birla Group. That group added close to 18% in market cap, and the combined market cap of that group is now breached the 3 lakh crore threshold in 2020. Look at the Mahindra Group now. The Mahindra Group added close to 24% in market cap in 2020, and the overall combined market cap of that group is now over 2 lakh crores. Look at the Murugapa Group. That's been the third best performing group in 2020. The combined market cap of that group has gone up by 36%, and now it is inching close to the 1 lakh crore threshold in 2020. The big outperformance came in the Adani Group. That group has doubled the market cap in 2020. Now, the combined market cap of that group is now 4 lakh crores, as we speak in 2020. The, the next is the Tata Group. The Tata Group added close to 34% in market cap, but the bigger number is they've added close to 4 lakh crores in market cap in 2020, and the combined market cap of that group is now inching close to the 16 lakh crores. 
One caveat here, I'm not including Reliance Industries in the list, but even Reliance Industries added close to 3 lakh crores in market cap in 2020. So that's the kind of wealth most of the larger groups have created uh, for the shareholders. Now, within the groups, look at the individual stocks which have done well. So look at the Tata group now. Within the Tata group, the two best performing stocks have been Tata Consumers and Tata Communications. Tata Consumer has rallied 175% this year, whereas Tata Communications has rallied close to 163% in 2020. Look at Adani group now. Within Adani Group, the best performing stock has been Adani Green. That stock has rallied 500% in 2020. The other group stock, Adani Enterprise, that rallied close to 125% in 2020. Look at the Murugappa Group now. Within the Murugappa Group, the best performing stock is Tube Investments. That stock rallied 65% uh, in 2020. And others like EID Perry and Coromandel International, they rallied more than 50%. Look at the Mahindra Group now. Within the Mahindra Group, we all know about m, &M which has done really well this year. That's up 33%. Uh, but the big outperformance in Mahindra Group came in Mahindra EPC. That stock rallied 52% in 2020. Within the Aditya Birla Group, uh, Vodafone Idea was a big outperformer, though it's a small stock, but that stock rallied 73% in 2020. In the Godrej Group, uh, we all talk about Godrej Properties, which is a flagship company. That did well with 40% rally, but the big outperformance in Godrej Group came in Aztec Life. That stock rallied 175% in 2020 and has been a big outperformer. So as I said in the beginning, 2020 was a challenging year for the world at large, but there are a few gems within the larger groups that did really well and rewarded the shareholders handsomely in 2020. All right, thanks very much, uh, Nimesh. That was the report card of large conglomerates and how they've done in 2020. Let's talk about Deal Street now. m and activity slowed to a crawl at the start of 2020, but deal makers managed to find opportunities in adversity. There was hectic action in the second half of the year with deals worth a whopping $80 billion being inked. Nisha is here with the Deal Street wrap. Nisha. It almost seemed like a 2020 March in the second half of the year when deal activity picked up. Catalyzed by a gush of liquidity fueling the equity markets and also the pandemic situation and the disruption giving new opportunities in times of adversity. So the deals worth $80 billion clocked in. And if you look at the sectors, well, telecom, as well as retail. These are the two which really took away a lion's share of the FDI inflows, all because of one company, Reliance Industries. So the top deals from new pool of capital lined up to invest in geo platforms and then Reliance Retail and the global giants like Facebook, Google and Market marquee private equity firms really joined what was nothing short of a spectacle. Now, 2020 also marks the end of retail king Kishore Biyani, who sold his business to Reliance Retail, unheard of in the promoter businesses. Now, solving for debt concerns, that is the key. That continued to be the key driver for most deals and many in the sectors, capital intensive ones like real estate as well as infrastructure. And also another important deal, RBI backed and SBI led rescue plan for Yes Bank. That tops the chart for me in deals avant-garde. Let's talk about the private equity action then. And these investors spotted value creators with an eagle eye this year. And many switched to complete buyout situations, mostly seen in the healthcare, given the future potential, and also the tech world due to the digital revolution. And remember, many promoters also got lured by the mouth-watering market valuations. A few dampeners to talk about as a fallout of the changing geopolitics of the world during COVID cast a shadow on especially the startup world. But while there were problems, there were new avenues that are opening up to tap the global funds by way of global direct listing. That is expected to be a big theme in the year 2021, along with deleveraging, consolidation, and also not to forget the government's divestment push. So while Deal Street in 2021, still the new year opens up new horizons for the deal makers. 
Well, Nisha, many thanks for joining us. That was a look at Deal Street in 2020 and uh, a glimpse ahead on what 2020 holds. Up next, a look back at how COVID-19 has changed our lives in the past year, a timeline of the pandemic and what it did to the world. That when we return.